Welcome back again to this demo about implementing single sign-on enabled Microsoft Team Messaging extension with Teams Toolkit, the longest title ever. What are we going to talk about? Well, we are going to see how we can use the Teams Toolkit to create a Microsoft Team Messaging extension for search, which will rely on a single sign-on security context, so that at the very end, we will be able from the messaging search extension to search something through a back-end API, accessing that back-end API under the identity of the current user who is consuming Teams in the desktop or web application. And this is, I think, really powerful for line of business applications where you want to authorize access to content to your users. Users. So, out of the box, uh, Teams Toolkit gives us the basic infrastructure and scaffolding uh, for creating uh, a message extension for search, but we need to accomplish quite some steps to do the single sign-on part of the story. So, let me switch uh, to the actual demo and let me show you, first of all, how the solution behaves uh, in my Teams client. So, here I'm in an hypothetical chat with my colleague Guido. And let's say that I want to send him a message with something which will come out from my line of business system. I'm uh, relying on a Contos retail demo that we have been using already in the past, and I'm using the same backend uh, APIs just to make it easier and reusable uh, solution. Here I can search for something like clothes in my retail company, and by searching, I'm searching content filtered by the identity of the user who is consuming this search API. I can select this wonderful pair of jeans and I can send a message to Guido to say, look at these jeans and let me know if you like them or not. Okay, that's the idea. And I can do that from a chat. I can do that from a channel. So I can go into any channel, start a post. And again, I can start searching for clothes. And you can see here, we can include them in a, in a uh, channel as well as, and this is really interesting in my opinion, I can also use the same extensibility point in outlook.com if I want to create a new mail, let's say for myself, because I used to write to myself and to reply back as well because I don't want to feel alone. Ciao Paolo or Pablo. This will be my email. And in the content of my email, I'm going to use the application Contoso Retails again. And here I can still search for, I don't know, jacket this time. And I will be able, hopefully, to get a jacket or more than one from my uh, database of clothes. And I can select one item and include that item in the email that I'm going to send to myself. So that's the idea. So extending the user experience in Teams and in Outlook.com with a fully secured backend API. The backend API is the API that we have for the Contoso Retail. And as you can see from the Swagger UI, every single API endpoint requires authorization to be uh, used by the consumer. And that's why we have uh, an application registered in Azure IT Directory through which we securely access that backend API. So one step at a time, we will get there. First of all, we need to create a messaging extension for Teams. How can we do that? Well, in Teams Toolkit from Visual Studio Code, we can start, and let me do that, we can start a new instance of Visual Studio Code. And using the Teams Toolkit, we can say that we want to create a new application of type message extension, and it will be a custom search result. For example, in TypeScript, I will target this folder and I will call it uh, uh, Team Search. 01, just for the sake of providing one name. As you will see, the scaffolding uh, uh, made by Teams Toolkit will prepare for me a solution with a few instructions, which will allow me to implement a search extension, which in the search uh, searchapp.ts file will simply rely on uh, an API, uh, the npmjs API, to anonymously search for something and will return the results of the search query uh, through a set of adaptive cards uh, that we can create for each and every resulting item. And then we can add uh, to a collection of uh, items that will be then the result of our search query. 
Now, the, inter the interesting part of the story is how we can make this uh, extension uh, aware of the user context and able to work with single sign-on. So let me close this one, which is the out-of-the-box scaffolded one, and let me show you what we can do and what I have done in my real solution. So first of all, in order to do that, I need to register in Azure Active Directory an application which will be enabled to consume my secured backend API. So, as I showed you before, I have my backend API, and this backend API is registered as a multi-tenant API in this scenario, but doesn't really matter that it is a multi-tenant one. It is just an application registered in Nature Active Directory, which exposes an API with a specific API unique URI and with a permission, which is, in my scenario, contosoretail.consume. So in order to be able to consume my backend API, I need to provide an access token with this specific permission scope in the uh, uh, access token itself. So in order to do that, I registered in the Azure Active Directory of my uh, consumer tenant another application, which will be configured in the API permission section to have the contoso retail.consume permission for that specific API. So I have the API provider and I have the API consumer. Now, in the uh, Teams Toolkit solution, I created an aad.manifest.json file, which simply defines uh, the uh, definition of that application, the consumer application in Azure Active Directory. So here I have uh, all of the information about my application, including, for example, that I want to have the permission to consume my uh, Contoso Retail app. Actually, it is a bit cryptical here, but this is the ID of the target API, and this is the ID of the permission that we saw before. So these two GUIs are basically this information that I see in the UI of Azure ID or Enter ID. I also have in the configuration that I have a list of applications that are allowed to use this API. And this list of applications, as you can see, are the Teams desktop, the Teams web client, the Outlook desktop, and so on and so forth. Once I've done that, I have to slightly update the auto-generated Teams app uh, dot yaml file whether the local or the one for deployment remotely and in this file i need to add a few uh, uh, elements like for example the section to create my Azure Active Directory application, so that when I will do the deployment of my solution, the Azure uh, Enter ID application will be deployed into the target tenant. And here I have to provide a set of input arguments like the ID of the application, the client ID, the tenant ID, and all the stuff that I need to use. I also need, and you will find the whole source code of the solution on GitHub, so no worries, you don't need to uh, catch all of the uh, all of the excerpts of code. I need to provide uh, an instruction to update that uh, application registration in case of need. And I also need to configure my application in the uh, local set, local configs file in order to have all of the settings that I need to run my uh, single sign-on bait solution. Once I've done that, I also need Need to configure in the manifest of my team solution that I will need to rely on single sign-on. That means that in the uh, last part of this file, I have the web application info section. When I declare that I have an application uh, which will have the uh, client ID of the application that I registered in Azure ID and which will rely on these resource. Let me show you again the application in Azure Enter ID. And in fact, this consumer application is also configured to expose an API itself with this specific application unique URI and with a permission which is called access as user. This is the permission scope that we need whenever we want to do single sign-on in a Teams application. And here we are declaring that our application through its manifest is based on that specific app ID and on that specific resource or audience ID so that the access as user token that will be generated by the Teams client and sent to my bot in the back end for searching uh, the content will be related to this application. Once I've done that, I still need to do a few more steps. First of all, I need to slightly update the configuration of my app so that I will be able to not only reference to the 
spot uh, settings that are created by default by the scaffolding tool of Teams Toolkit, but I will also uh, be able to re uh, refer to the client ID, tenant ID, secret, and all the settings of my custom back API. I will need to provide a couple of pages which you can find in the repository uh, of this solution on GitHub, which will implement the actual uh, uh, login and uh, uh, initial login and uh, uh, end of the login stage for the user. So the out start will be the URL provided to the user to start the sign in process, and the out end will be the one used to close to complete the authentication flow. And in the index.ts of my solution, I will have uh, to make those uh, HTML pages available through the uh, Node.js server of my solution. And once I've done that, I will need to install a couple of um, NPM packages, specifically the TeamsFX one and the isomorphic fetch one, so that we can use them in the updated search up TS file. Why do I say updated? Well, because using the Teams FX uh, library, this uh, search app.ts file has been improved, and now we don't have any more just an anonymous query to an anonymous API. But actually, we replace the handle Teams messaging extension query with a new invocation of this handle message extension query with single sign-on, which is provided by uh, the uh, TeamsFX library. And in this one, I will get as an input through the context that is provided to this uh, method of my uh, search bot, I can provide the token that the Teams client will send to my backend bot. This token will be an access token for this application, the consumer one, and will include the access as user permission scope. Now in the bot, in the backend of my Teams extension, I can use this uh, functionality, this class provided by TeamsFX, which is the on behalf of user credential, which will use that token and a configuration of a new token that I want to retrieve in order to get an access token for the backend API, so for the search cloth API. And this will be a on behalf of token because the uh, bot will actually make the search query on behalf of the user who is consuming the Teams client in the front end in the desktop or web Teams application. Using this object, I make a request for a token to consume my Contoso Retail .consume, uh, target API. So this will give me back an access token with the permission scope for my backend API. And then I can finally make a REST request and get inside and put inside the authorization header the access token that I've got through this credential object, and I can get back the items resulting from the search query against my uh, backend search API. And then I can simply provide the output as a set of adaptive cards. Quite a journey so far. We still need couple of more uh, easy steps. First of all, if we want to automate the deployment, we also need to update uh, the infra section of Teams Toolkit, adding the custom parameters to the azure.parameters.json file. These are the input parameters that we also want to have in the configuration of our solution. And I also need to update the bicep file for Azure deployment so that when deploying the web application, in the web application, we can configure all of the settings that we need for our uh, bot to being able to consume the backend API. As I said, there are quite some steps that we need to accomplish, but thanks God, there is a document that you can rely on and which you will find in my slide deck in the last slide. And here you can find all of the detailed steps. And you will also find the uh, source code of the solution in the Contoso Retail Dashboard sample under the sample gallery. So these are the useful links. The sample itself and the instructions step by step to make what I've just shown you. 
It will take a little bit, but you will be really happy to have a single sign-on experience in search extensions for Teams. Thank you, and back to you, David. Thank you.